Yo, what's up guys? It's Coach Nate. Today we're going to be talking about the steel training principles. These are the principles that I have developed for steel strength training after about a decade of working with hundreds and hundreds of clients. Okay. So, you know, one of the things that I like to explain when it comes to principles is the idea of principles versus tactics. So think of it this way. Principles are a broad, uh, you know, overview of what you need to be doing. I, I view the principles as the, the outside lanes on the highway. And as long as you're falling within the, you know, on the highway, you're, you're adhering to all the principles that are very broad. You can use all kinds of different tactics at different times based on what you like, what's worked better, what's working better for you in that season. Um, and, you know, the tactics are going to be the different lanes. And I think one of the main reasons that there's so much confusion uh, when it comes to exercise is that you have all these magazines and you know I guess I need to bring it to the 21st century articles blog posts videos things like this and they're talking about you know oh you got to try this in the gym this is going to get you abs this is going to help you build muscle this is going to help you tone up and what they're almost always talking about is a tactic they're like, come try out this lane, but they don't describe it like that. So what I've found is if you adhere to the training principles, you will get great results. Um, and then you, there's a whole variety of tactics that you can choose within these principles. But if you are choosing tactics that violate one or more of these principles, you will almost certainly not make great progress. So it's important that you understand the difference between principles and tactics and so that's why we're gonna be talking about our training or strength training principles today. So number one, choose exercises that allow you to train hard, pain-free. Number two, start too light. Number three, always use good form. Number four, train with mostly compound movements. Number five, train two to four days a week for 45 minutes. And number six, quality is greater than quantity. Now, I should note, this video is for the everyday man or woman who wants to be lean, strong, and healthy so they can do the things they love with the people they love, who want to get amazing results in the gym without, you know, I say it like this, we want your fitness plan to serve you, not you to serve your fitness plan, okay? If you're somebody who wants to get as muscular and strong as you possibly can, as shredded as you possibly can, you know, these training principles will get you 80% of the way there. But that really falls beyond the scope of this video. This is not to the person who's trying to compete in bodybuilding by any means, but it is for the everyday person who wants to be lean, strong, and healthy. And the reality is you can get very strong, very muscular, very lean, have an amazing physique, perform well, and get very, very healthy with these training principles. So let's dive in. So choosing exercises that allow you to train hard pain-free. Look, just a note, when I say pain-free, I don't mean that the muscles are pain-free. They're going to feel fatigue and burning and soreness, and, and that's all part of the process. Some might even say it's fun. But you want to choose exercises that will allow you to work very, very hard without aggravating your joints. This is true whether you've got a history of injury in a certain area or not. You want to be able to train as hard as you can, push your body to the limit, and know that that exercise is not going to aggravate your joints. So, look, here's the thing. First of all, we want to, you know, use good form. That's number three. But if, you know, there are many times where somebody's having some joint pain with a movement, and then we as the expert trainers can, you know, make some tweaks, and then boom, pain is gone. But there are, you know, 10, 20% of the time where they're experiencing pain, it may just be that that exercise doesn't make sense for them. That's not the first thing we jump to. The first thing we look at is form. But there are times where certain exercises are not good for certain people, and so we choose another tool. We have plenty of tools in the tool bag. We choose another exercise. Don't. There are lots of exercises that we prefer to use over others, but don't get so married to one exercise. If an exercise is bothering you consistently, find something else. It's not worth training through joint pain. So that's number one. Number two, start to light. Or, you know, maybe another way of saying this is as Jim Wendler, the streaming and conditioning coach that I learned a lot from, uh, you know, about a decade or more ago, 
read lots of his books and articles, and one of the things that he said is leave your ego at the door. You know, here's the thing, you wanna start too light. It's much, much, much better, and I'm speaking from experience, it's much better to start too light because we've got plenty of time to make it harder. Plenty of time, all right? Start too light, learn how to use good form. I keep referencing that, it must be important. Start too light, use good form, and then add weight over time, okay? It is much better to do that than to start too heavy and get hurt or start too heavy and have to back off and then you're frustrated with yourself. Just start too light, okay? You're gonna make incredible progress in your first six, 12, 24, 36 months of training, so don't rush it, all right? Don't rush it. You're going to get where you, you're going no matter what. Start too light. If anything, you're gonna get there faster than if you're too aggressive right out the gate. Number three, always use good form. So we've got the right exercises, we're starting with the proper load. Now it's time for you to learn the exercises and master them, okay? You wanna use good form, okay? That's, that's the, for two reasons, it's safe, it's gonna prevent injury. And as soon as you get injured, like you're out, first of all, that sucks, it hurts, it's no fun, it's probably gonna cost you time and money. It's also time that you're out of the gym where you could be making progress. You've got to use good form. The other thing is using good form, not only does it keep you safe, but it's actually most effective. It ensures that you get the most out of that exercise. So you've got to master good form. Next, we want to train with mostly, not only, mostly compound movement. So <clears throat> what's a compound movement? Well, we have compound movements and we have isolation movements. So compound movements are, are it's going to be any movement that uses multiple joints. So a squat, you're bending at the hips and the knees and the ankle, it's a compound movement. A bench press, push up, dumbbell bench press, you're moving at the shoulder and at the elbow, all right? An RDL, Romanian deadlift, or a deadlift, again, you're hinging, you're moving at the, at the hips and the knees. A row, you're moving at the shoulders, and the elbow, compound, meaning, meaning multiple joint, you're working multiple muscles at once. These movements give us the biggest bang for our buck. They're the most effective, the most efficient, because we're able to hit multiple muscle groups at the same time. But also, let's compare that to isolation movements, which we still use, but we tend to put those at the end of the workout. You know, maybe spend 10 to 15 minutes per workout working on those. Isolation movements is gonna be any kind of single joint movement. So like a curl, you're just moving at the elbow, it's only working the bicep. A tricep extension, just moving at the elbow, you're working the tricep. Lateral raise, shoulder joint, you're working the shoulders, okay? You know, crunches, all right, you're bending, you know, at the waist, at the, um, at the hips, it's gonna be an isolation movement, you're working your core, okay? Those are isolation movements. Compound movements are very functional, right? So if you are doing squats, that translates to a lot of things you're doing in your day-to-day -day life. If you learn how to squat well and add load, it's gonna make everything else in your life easier. Now, if we were to just go to the gym and do a bunch of isolation movements on, say, machines, like would you get all those muscles stronger? Absolutely, but you wouldn't be learning how to move your body well. Um, for one, but two, it's horribly inefficient, right? Like a squat is gonna train your, your quads, the front of your thighs, your hamstrings, the back of your thighs, and your glutes. We all know what the glutes are, the booty. All right, all at the same time, all right? Um, it's much faster, it's much more efficient, and more effective to use mostly compound movements, and then you can sprinkle in some isolation work for fun, because who doesn't love to hit some arms and abs and shoulders and all that stuff? All right, train <clears throat> two to four days per week for 45 minutes. In another video, I talk about you know where on this spectrum you should fall because some people we tend to push more towards two days a week, others we tend to push more towards four days a week. Depends on the individual, your circumstances, your starting point, and your goals. But if you're falling within this time frame, 45 minutes per workout, you are going to be golden. You can make very, very good progress with just two days a week in the gym. And if you start training three or four days a week, you're really, I mean, you're not gonna be pro bodybuilder at that point, but like you're really gonna be able to get, you know, 70, 80 plus percent of the progress that you would make training six plus days per week for more than an hour. So 
That's really all that you need. And I would say this the same way that I tell people start too light. So when in doubt when choosing a weight, start too light. Same thing here. If you're in doubt, if you're not sure, like you're like, hey, I'm thinking two or three days a week or three or four days a week, you know, but I'm not sure about my recovery or if I have the time, when in doubt, start too light. Start with less, okay? You can always do more. It's much easier to start with two days and go to three than to start with three, realize you've made a mistake and go to two days. Now to wrap it up, this is possibly my favorite one, is you need to remember quality is greater than quantity. So here's what I mean. <clears throat> we want quality sets. We wanna you know, start too light, but then of course we're gonna add load over time. More on that in a second. We're gonna use good form, okay? Um, we're gonna use mostly compound movements. All that plays into quality. Good form, the right exercises, the right load, um, also, once you get, once you've been training for a few weeks, you get really good at a movement, you want to make sure that you're taking most of those sets close to failure. So failure being the point where you literally, you know, you're doing a bench press and you literally can't move the weight anymore. That's failure. Okay. Um, you don't actually have to hit failure, but you want to be two or three reps shy of failure. I just heard the other day, um, from Mike Israel, fantastic exercise scientist, um, bodybuilder, PhD, all the things, very, very smart. And, and he said a very simple way to know if you're that close is if on your last rep, you know, let's say you're doing curls and then you really slow down on that last rep. Maybe you could do one or two or possibly three more, but at that point, you know, you're in the right spot. You're in the general area that you need to be that tells us we are close to failure. Okay. A lot of people go to the gym and they just go through the motions and you know, they're, they're doing their set and then they're done and then they do another. So they do a ton of sets. They've got the quantity, but they look and perform the same for years, even decades. We all seen these people in the gym. We know who we're talking about. And many of us have been guilty of being this person as well. Instead, when you focus on fewer sets and doing very, very high quality, pushing it close to failure. Um, and then the next thing would be progressive overload. So the idea is over time, you want to make sure that you're progressively loading more than you were, you know, a week, two weeks, a month, three, three months prior. So over time, you do need to be going up. Now, I describe it like this. Getting stronger, changing your body is like a, it's like a dance. It's like a dance. So you are the lead and your body is your partner. You, your partner is the one you brought to the dance. You can't work with anybody else, okay? You've got to appreciate and accept the body that you have. It is your job to apply a stimulus to lead and let the body respond. You cannot force it, you can't beat it, you can't drag it into submission. You might be able to do that for a while, but you will pay in the long run. You cannot do that, you've got to take care of your body. But at the same time, you do wanna push it a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more constantly on the edge of a little bit more, a little bit more. And over time, that doesn't mean you have to go up every single workout. Don't force it, but do push it. And so over time, you need to be lifting more weight and or reps than you were, again, a week, two weeks, a month, three months prior. You, that's how we know we're making progress, okay? And I'm just gonna go ahead and put this up here because this really should be number seven, which is progressive overload. Now, I'll get into in another video, like what is the ideal number of sets per week because there is a lot of really good data on that. But before we even get into that, as a general rule, quality over quantity, if you're focusing on progressive overload, fewer high quality sets is infinitely better than a lot of like half effort sets. So those are your training principles. If you adhere to these, there are lots of tactics that fall within this. So you can design a program based on what you like, what's gonna work best for you, what you're most likely to stick to. But these are the seven principles that you wanna follow. Choose exercises that allow you to train hard, pain-free, start too light, always use good form, train with mostly compound movements, train two to four days a week for 45 minutes, quality over quantity, and progressive overload.